Hey what's up guys and welcome back to today's video. Today I'm gonna finish the story I started yesterday. Jeff Peters as a personal magnet. So let's begin. What does this paraphernalia you speak of dog? Says the mayor. You ain't a socialist, are you? I'm speaking, says I, of the great doctrine of scientific finance financing of the enlightened school of long distance, some consensual treatment of fallacies and menengids of that wonderful indoor sport known as a personal magnetism. Can you work it? Can can you work it, Doc? Asked the mayor. I'm one of the sole sun her sun her dreams and ostensible hoopers hopeless of the inner pulpit says i the lame talk and the blind rubber whenever i make a pass at them i am a medium color Coloratura, a coloratura hypnotist and a suspicious spiritus, spiritus and a spiritus control. It was only through me and the and the recent scenes scenes at an air airborne that the late president of the wine Weininger Bitters company could revisit the earth to communicate with his sister Jane. You see me peddling medicine on the streets, says I, to the poor. I don't practice personal magnetism on that. On them. I do not drag it in the dust, says I, because they haven't got the dust. Will you treat my case as the mayor? Listen, says I, I've had a good deal of trouble with medical societies everywhere I've been. I don't practice medicine, but to save your life, I'll give you the Physic treatment, if you agree as a mayor, as mayor, not to push the license question. Of course I will, says he. And now get to work, doc, for them pains are coming on again. My fee will be 250 cur guaranteed in two treatments, says I. All right, says Mayor, Mayor. I'll pay it. I guess my life worth that much. I sat down by the bed. I looked him straight on the eye. Now, says I, get your mind off the disease. You ain't sick. You haven't got a heart of clavicle, of a clavicle or funny bone or brains or anything. You haven't got any pain, declare error. Now you feel the pain that you didn't have living, don't you? Now you feel the pain that you didn't have living, don't you? I do feel some little better, dog, says the mayor. Darn it, if I don't. Now state a, f state a few lies about my not not having this swelling in my left side and i think i could be proper 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 up and have some sausage and box with cakes i made a few passes with my hands now says i the inflammation's gone 
the right lobe of the perihelion has subsided. You're getting sleepy. You can't hold your eyes open any longer. For the present, the disease is checked. Now you're asleep. The mayor shut, shut his eyes slowly and began to snore. You observe, Mr. Tittle, says I, the wonders of modern science. Tittle, says he, when will you give uncle the rest of the treatment? Dr. Pooh, 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 Wahoo, says I, I'll come back at 11 tomorrow. When he wakes up, give him eight drops of Ter terpentine and three pounds of steak. Good morning. The next morning I went back on time. Well, Mr. Riddle, says I when he opened the bedroom door. And how is ankle this morning? He seems much better, says the young man. The mayor's color and pulse was fine. I gave him another treatment, and he said the last of the pain left him. Now, says I, you had better stay in bed for a day or two, and you will be all right. It's a good thing I happen to be on Fisher Hill, Mr. Mayor, says I, for all the remedies In the cor cornucopia, that the regular schools of medicine use couldn't have saved you. And now that error has flu and pain proved, and pain proved a per perjurer, perjurer. Let's allude to a cheer, cheerfuler subject. Cheerfuller. Says the fee of 250. No checks, please. I had to write my name on the back of a check almost as bad as I do on the front. I've got the cash here, says the mayor pulling a pocketbook from under his pillow. He counts out five fifty-dollar notes and holds them in his hand. Bring the receipt, he says to Biddle. I signed the receipt and the mayor handed me the money. I put it in my inside pocket careful. Now do your duty, officer, said the mayor, ringing grinning, much unlike a sick man. Mr. Biddle lays on his hand on my arm. You're under arrest. Dr. Wahoo, Elias Peters, says he. For practicing medicine without authority under the state law. Who are you? I ask. I'll tell you who is he, says Mr. Mayor, sitting up in the bed. He is a detective employed by State Medical Society. He has been following you over five count count counties. He came to me yesterday and we fixed up this scheme to catch you. I guess you won't do any more doc doctoring around these parts, Mr. Faker. What was, what was it you said I had, Doc? The mayor laughs. Compound. Well, it wasn't softening of the brain, I guess, anyway. A detective, says, says I. Correct, says Bill. I'll have to turn 
you over to the sheriff. Let's see you do it, says I. And I grabs Biddle by the throat and half throws him out of the window. And half throws him out of the window. But he pulls a gun and stick sticks it under my chin and I stand still. Then he puts handcuffs on me and takes the money out of my pocket. I witness, says he, that you are the same bill that you and I marked, John, Judge Banks. I'll turn them. I'll turn them over to the sheriff when we get to his office, and he will send you a receipt. They'll have to be used as evidence in this case. In the case. All right, Mr. Biddle, says the mayor. And now, Doc, Wahoo. He goes on. Why don't you... He goes on. Why don't you demonstrate? Can't you pull the cork out? Of your magnetism? With your teeth and hocus pocus, them handoffs, handcuffs off. Come on, officer, says I. Dignified. I, am, I may as well make the best of it. And then I turns to all banks and rattles my chains. Mr. Mayor, says I, the time will come soon when you will believe that personal magnetism is a success and you will be sure that is succeeded in the case too, in this case too. And I guess I did. When we got nearly to the gate, I says, we might meet some, somebody now, Andy. I reckon you better take them off. And hey, why? Of course, it was Andy Tucker. That was his scheme. And that's how we got the capital to go into business together. That's the interesting story. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to me today and see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.